Why would I make a connection between COVID and flu when they are apparently different infections? What could be going on that could be impacting the way that we are seeing presentation of disease? Today, I'm going to be tackling another one of those important points because what I do is I look at the news, I look at the patterns that are unusual, and then I try and find explanations for why they're happening. And so, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. I've been focused on autoimmunity around COVID since 2020, and I have a unique insight into what's happening in the pandemic. Here is what was fully in the news just recently. An intense flu season is filling hospitals with severely ill patients. This was on the 14th of February, 2025, and this is published through CNN Health. Now, the point is, is not so much that there is just a flu crisis, but why? What is going on? What could be the mechanism as to why this is happening? For those of you who haven't seen my recent spike detox presentation, it's an essential part of your learning. And before we end this presentation, I'll be taking you through just the summary as to why it is that I think that this is such a critical piece of the puzzle in terms of understanding what is happening. I'll be showing you how this happens internationally as well, what's going on with regards to other countries in terms of their conditions that are flaring up at the moment. In the US, it's flu, but it may not just be the US, it may be many other places in the world are having similar types of problems. Let's listen to what was said in this presentation as we look at trying to understand what's been going on. Let's hear what he has to say. This flu season is now on track to be one of the worst since before the pandemic. So we wanted to know what questions you might have about the flu and many of you wrote in asking, how can you tell if you actually have the flu? Like Robin from Moab, Utah, who asked if a fever is part of having the flu. Well, first things first, let me show you this. You can see from the map from the CDC just how intense flu activity is right now. The darker parts of the country, very high levels of flu. So if you have symptoms and you live in one of those states, it's gonna be more likely the flu. Now, aside from fever, which is common, there are other common symptoms, including aches, chills, cough, and headache. And with flu, keep in mind that these symptoms usually come on suddenly and severely. But at the same time, admittedly, sometimes it can be hard to tell. So Robin, let me, let me show you something. Um, if you think you have the flu, you can now test yourself at home. I just wanted to pause that there. And if you look very carefully, you will notice that it's a COVID and flu jab three in one. Very important to observe that. And I'll come back to why I think that's so important in just a second, but let's hear what else he has to say. With a kit like this, it's the first time we've had a kit like this, a home flu test. You actually have a, a swab here, the reagent, and then something that will look familiar, a little testing kit, cost about $15 per test. And knowing whether or not you have the flu means that you can be careful not to spread the flu to others, especially those at high risk. And you can get treated, especially if you're at high risk yourself. Keep in mind that antivirals are gonna be most effective if taken within the first couple of days of experiencing symptoms. Tamiflu can help reduce how long you are sick, and it is approved for adults and kids two weeks and older. And for those of you who haven't gotten your flu shot, it's still not too late because keep in mind, there's still a lot of time in this flu season. Experts expect another month to six weeks or so of heavy flu activity before hopefully things start to get better. Keep in mind, it takes about two weeks for those antibodies to develop and help fight off the flu. So now's a good time to get vaccinated. At this point, it's important to note that they're having an exceptionally unusual flu season. And the question still remains, why? And they're talking about the fact that it's filling hospitals with severely ill patients. Now, I'm going to be referencing this paper all the time. And it's a paper that has been looking from Denmark at some of the outcomes in terms of COVID versus flu. I think this is such a valuable piece of information. 
and I have nothing else like it to be able to reference. So it's really important information. And this is what they found when they looked at the hospital and mortality burden of COVID compared to influenza in Denmark. This was from the 2022 to 2024 period of time. And there is an image on it in this, in this paper that I think is really valuable to highlight the differences. And which is why when they're talking about lots of severely ill people in hospital with flu, yes, we know that this happens. But when you actually look at the outcomes from what happened in Denmark, you realize that this is far more complicated than we may think. Take a look at this here. As I've got the figures here, this is showing influenza. Number of hospital admissions between that period of time in 2022 to 2024. Number of deaths within 30 days of the hospital admission. And you can see that there are two distinct waves here with regards to flu. And yes, there are some deaths in gray. And in the second period, it was slightly higher. But when you look at COVID, this is a beast. And you can see the comparison here. For one, you can see that there is not so much of a peak with regards to COVID. There is a little bit of a dip here, which would have been the summer period, but it is almost continuous throughout the year. And look at the mortality in terms of the gray area here that is going on. This is really, really significant stuff when you look at what is happening with regards to um, flu versus COVID. COVID clearly, has a much higher, much more significant mortality rate than does what happens with influenza. So what seems to be filling the hospitals, in my view, is probably not flu. It's likely to be the fact that they have had a COVID infection in relation to this. And here is how it works. Just a reminder of the science. You can see here, upper airway tract infection, virus gets in and replicates. Everything is about preventing this virus from breaking through this mucosal immune system. And this is very sophisticated. The problem is, is that seems as though this mucosal immune system is not well trained in the vaccinated cohort. And so therefore, they are far more likely to have infections that will break through into their systemic immune system. And this is what will then happen. Virus gets into the bloodstream infects the lining of the blood vessels. This causes all kinds of problems from going on in the body. This is a critical part of what is happening. And so when they looked at the patients, total, you have to remember, this is total, all age groups, 9.7% of patients hospitalized with COVID died within 30 days of the admission. And critically, they didn't die of COVID they died of apparently something else. It's just, just the association. And when you look at the age groups, the way how it has been broken down, you can see that for the over 65s, goodness, this is almost 12% mortality rate in terms of over 65s. And you have to remember that all of these here have largely been vaccinated, 95% vaccination rate in the over 65s. So this is typical of what I describe as the COVID storm, where what they have is that they have chronic immune activation after what appears to be mild infection. And then this can lead to quite significant um, problems, health problems afterwards. But the question still remains, what is the connection with COVID and influenza and flu. Why do I think that COVID is making it worse? This is where, as I said, the more that the information comes out about the origins of this virus, the more that we learn that the funding seems to have come from various sources into the Wuhan Institute of Virology, the more you have to start to realize that this is probably not a normal, typical virus. Once you understand that, you will then start to see why it is that we're seeing such unusual patterns. And here we have what happens after an infection. It literally depletes or dysregulates this part of your immune system. Critical B cells, T cells, natural killer cells. 
that means that your monocytes become overactivated, so that your whole immune system is thrown off after infection. And this will make people more vulnerable when you add on top of that interferon suppression, more vulnerable to ongoing other viral infections. The problem will be is that as the flu season dies down, as it naturally does, we will then move into another phase where interferon suppression and immune cell depletion will be associated with strep, mycoplasma. And so you will find in the summer periods that those infections start to rise as well. Until there is acknowledgement about the patterns that are occurring and why they are occurring, we're going to go in a circle. And so this is why this information that I share with regards to the spike detox, does everyone need one? Really interesting, as I took an independent view, just looking at the signs, trying to understand what was happening, make sense of whether or not, what do you do if it is there? How do you know whether or not it could be there? That's coming, and the strategies you can take. A very important piece of information. And so therefore, if you're interested, please click on the link in the description to follow this course. We have a lot of time in front of us because we're still having ongoing circulation of virus. And the point that I'm making to people is even if you personally are protected in terms of you have good natural immunity against COVID, just remember a lot of people are circulating a lot of other things than just COVID. Do you have immunity to RSV, influenza? mycoplasma, streptococcus, just be safe. We can't have everyone being sick. We need some people to take care of everyone else. So make sure that you follow along. I'll be taking apart the science in the weeks to come. Look out for more information. Thank you.